right, guys, welcome back to another video. We have tons of huge news to talk about today. We usually don't have that much on Fridays, but there is tons to talk about today. So make sure to stay tuned throughout the whole video. But before we continue, if you enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up, hit the like, share it, all that stuff, and check out my Spotify link is in the description. We're going to start off here with the ever, or I guess the never ending narrative around Black Myth Wukong. And we're coming up with some more information here as to what potentially could have happened with the game on Xbox. So initially it started off that there was speculation that there was some sort of deal here to keep the game off of the Xbox platform, some sort of exclusivity deal with PlayStation for their console. And then just this week or last week, whenever it was that I talked about, there's so much news, it's kind of hard to remember, but we saw the reports about the memory leak, which was actually all falling there on game science because Xbox wasn't approving this game to go because it just wasn't able to run properly with the memory leak issue that again falls on game science falls on the developer for that and it's actually a good job by xbox but not allowing this game on the store until it is able to actually function so that was the new story that was going around and now we have this breaking tweet here from paul tassi that changes the narrative up again and it's falling back on that exclusivity speculation that a lot of people had said is probably the reason why it's not releasing on xbox day one and you have paul tassi here from forbes tweeting a source with knowledge of the situation has told me that black myth wukong is not currently on xbox because of an exclusivity deal and is not delayed because of any sort of technical issue. Now that's the extent of the tweet. I wonder if there will be more information that does come out. And then you go down here into the comments and you see Jez with this tweet, obviously kind of pointing towards the fact that he talked about this initially. He was one of the first people I believe to talk about this and report that that potentially was the problem here. Was there could, could have been an exclusivity deal? And it looks like right now, unless the narrative again changes tomorrow or next week, that could be very well the issue. So this isn't a surprise. You look at Black Myth Wukong, a release on the PlayStation 5. There are tons of technical issues on that game. Reality is it probably should be delayed on the PS5. So it not coming out on the Xbox, if that's the only place you have to play it, you're really not missing out on that much because you're going to get a crappy version of the game if it was out right now. You'd rather just wait until it is in a better state, especially with everything that's coming out. Game Pass, all that stuff. I mean, you have the Call of Duty Black Ops 6 beta out today. So there's so much stuff to play. So in the end, I would say maybe it even kind of works in Xbox's favor, or at least for the Xbox gamers favor, that when the game does finally land on the Xbox console... It will hopefully be in a far better position in terms of its performance and just run a lot smoother. But I am not surprised. This game has created so many different narratives from the sales that it did and everyone just kind of ignoring the fact that it sold so well. And one of the big reasons is because it's a hugely marketed game in China and they have a massive population and China controls a lot of the stuff that their population gets to play. I mean, they have games that are banned and everything, so it's hard for some other games to break into that region. But when you have a country with that many people and they're pushing it hard, of course, it's going to sell very well. You also have the narrative here with the PlayStation 5 launch, not launching on Xbox, and then the overall just performance. So here we are back again with exclusivity deal at least a console exclusivity deal here for it to be on the PS5 and not the Xbox. And it's another, if this is the truth, if this is factual, it's a slimy deal that PlayStation still takes part in behind the scenes. And that's why you have Xbox fans up in arms sometimes when you see Xbox games landing on PlayStation, then you have PlayStation behind the scenes here still doing these slimy deals to keep games off of the Xbox platform. So interesting stuff here, and I'm sure this narrative will continue to evolve and we will definitely be talking about it. Now, when it comes to the worst kept secret in video games right now, that is the PlayStation. PlayStation 5 Pro. We know this thing is coming out. We know it's coming out this year. One of the things we did not know yet was how was this console going to look? And now we may have seen the design of the PlayStation 5 Pro. This comes via the leaker Bill Bill Kuhn on Dead Labs magazine. And we can see some more information here. So it says here we have the details that information we managed to get a hold of about the new PlayStation console coming official name. No surprises. It is going to be the PlayStation 5 Pro or the PS5 Pro. And here is the design. You can see basically just looks like a PS5 all digital 
but with some line design down the center of down the middle of it, splitting the top and the bottom of the console so they're basically just going with the exact same thing and just adding a different design here for the face plates on the console itself so I don't know what I think about this design. I'm not surprised they went with something similar. I was kind of hoping that they would come up with something just brand new for the PS5 Pro design because I don't like the current design of the PlayStation 5, especially at least the fat PlayStation 5, which is the one I have. And I was hoping that they would fix a lot of that stuff with the PS5 Pro. And it looks like from this, they probably really have in. They're just adding in more power with a, a new interesting look on the faceplates of the console itself. It says, you can see a very similar design to that of the PS5 Slim. And we will find the same white color and exterior facade of the console. Two USB-C ports and the power button will also be present on the front of the console. You can see that here. And it says the first difference that can be noticed from the sketch is the presence of three black stripes in the middle of the outer facades of the PS5 Pro. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you look at the PlayStation 5 Slim, there's one black stripe. So instead of one, they're going to have three going across it. And that's it. And then obviously, of course, the increase in power. How is that really going to translate into performance when the games do launch on it itself? I think the reality is the biggest thing that's going to help games run better on the ps5 pro is going to be the software the pssr that they have been talking about now we haven't seen that in real life but from the specs that have been leaked it does not seem like that big of an upgrade over what is currently out there on the market and we are starting to see more and more games struggle to, to maintain a 60 frames per second on the console so i think it'll need a little bit more boost than just the hardware they're put in and I think that will be the software side of things. So that will be interesting to see how that all does track when it does come out. They say here that they expect an announcement to be made during the first half of September 2024. So in the next few weeks, we'll finally be able to stop talking about this as a rumor and be able to start talking about this as a real thing and anticipate the actual release date for the PlayStation 5 Pro. And just as an update here, there is this picture going around and... Bill Bukun here says that this is incorrect in terms of how it looks compared to the sketch that they have created, tweets this out, saying, I've seen many people sharing this edited picture published first by Tech Radar, but this won't look like the real PS5 Pro as the stripes don't match with my original sketch. Exactly, it will be three metallic-like black stripes on a black background besides the white faceplate. So there you have it. If you're seeing this picture, this is not what it is going to look like. Now, Game Pass. We know Game Pass does wonders for raising player bases in video games, especially games that have come out, didn't do very well, and they're probably decent games, but maybe it's a marketing thing, maybe a release at the wrong time. People just didn't end up playing it. And in my opinion, Atlas Fallen could be one of those games. I've been playing Atlas Fallen, and I think it's an extremely fun action RPG, really good combat the enemies are cool. Like you really have to have some strategy in there. It's not just only hacking and slashing. It's a very fun game. And I don't think it did very good when it did release, but we're seeing it here as it just dropped into Xbox Game Pass, just get a huge boost in player numbers. And it really shows off the power of Xbox Game Pass and what it can do to bring life back to a video game. It says here that Atlas Fallen player count spikes by 6,500% following the Xbox Game Pass Drop. They say with a sample size of over 2.4 million Xbox accounts, this is on True Achievements, our latest Xbox gameplay chart data reveals just how powerful Game Pass can be. Last week, Atlas Fallen saw a monumental 6,552% rise in Xbox players following its addition to the service. Looking through the data, Atlas Fallen was languishing in the 664th position in our chart of the most popular Xbox games the week before it landed on Game Pass. And then once it's landed in the service, it has now the 11th place on the gameplay chart, which is phenomenal. If you are Deck 13 here, the developers behind this game, and you're seeing this, it probably will end up looking at future deals here for games going in to Xbox Game Pass. The interesting thing here is I wonder what this does for the developer, what this does for future of their games. Are they going to be getting money off of how many people are playing the game? Do they make a deal here just to get the game in the service and all of that type of stuff? Because we have heard Phil Spencer talk about when they make deals for Game Pass, it's different. It depends on what the developer is looking for. But I would think 
if you are one of those developers and you want to take more of a risky deal and you want to bet that your game is going to get played, if you did that for a game like Atlas Fallen, probably pays off a lot more than just a single lump sum payment of getting the game into the service overall. But that's awesome. And like I said, go check out Atlas Fallen if you like action RPGs. Very fun, fluid movement across the world and the combat is just a joy to play. So cool stuff there when it comes to Atlas Fallen. All right, let's talk about some Call of Duty. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 bail launches today hope everyone's enjoying it if you are playing it right now if you've played it a little bit go check let me know in the comments what you think about it and we have some more information here about some features that are not going to be there for the last generation of consoles so the theater mode in black ops 6 is only available on the playstation 5 the series x and s and on the pc not available on the playstation 4 and the xbox one versions of the game i wonder how much longer Call of Duty is going to be supporting PS4 and Xbox One as we are now seeing features being taken out of it. I would think probably at least another year. Or so, I mean, there's still so many players specifically on the PlayStation 4 with their player base. Last number we saw was like 48% or something of PlayStation players were logging in via PS4 into PSN. So they're going to continue to support that. There's way too many consoles out there and way too many people playing on it for them to abandon it, but they are slowly uh, taking features away. They're slowly making it worse. And maybe that will force people who only play call of duty on the PS4, or the Xbox one to upgrade to the next gen consoles. And then that will slowly end up making the game only release on the current generation of hardware. Then we also have this Verdansk is returning to Warzone in spring of 2025. I'm sure a lot of people are excited about that, but they just put out a quick announcement here saying, run it back, Verdance will return to Call of Duty Warzone in 2025. I'm not a big Warzone player. I'm just more of a zombies and classic multiplayer gamer, but for all of the Warzone fans out there, I'm sure you guys are happy about that. So just some quick Call of Duty Black Ops 6 updates for you. Now, yesterday we talked about Final Fantasy, Xbox, Square Enix coming together, getting more games on Xbox. And I think it's great for fans of Final Fantasy series, fans of Square Enix who play on Xbox. I feel like now going forward, all of their releases will be releasing on the Xbox console day one. They've admitted that the PlayStation exclusivity deals weren't good, didn't help them, and that they need to reach more players. One way to do that, put their games on Xbox. So Final Fantasy 16, I talked about this yesterday. And I said, I definitely see that one coming onto Xbox. Now, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, I was a little more skeptical because there is the trilogy. So I have a feeling that PlayStation signed an exclusivity deal until the end of the trilogy. And then after that, we will see them land on Xbox, whether that's through a single collection or just one by one. But it may be coming sooner than we think, as Jess Corden does tweet this out. In the recent Xbox 2 Plus One special podcast, I dropped some of the hints I've been hearing lately about Square Enix's pending Xbox support for Final Fantasy. And from what I'm hearing, it could extend beyond Final Fantasy 16. So if we go down here, he does say he hinted that games like Final Fantasy 7 Remake and Final Fantasy 16 could be gearing up for an Xbox debut because Xbox executives are going to appear at the 2024 Tokyo Game Show, which is extremely exciting because, I mean, that is soon... And if they are going to be appearing there, we know what happened when Xbox appeared on stage for Final Fantasy 14, how big of a moment that was. I have a feeling we're going to get a massive announcement here. And, and I think it's going to be Final Fantasy 16, but it would be absolutely insane if they came out and said Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake will now be available on the Xbox consoles. I know there's people who don't care about Final Fantasy. I see it in my comments all the time, and that's completely fine. No need to play them if you don't like the series. But there are a lot of people who want to play Final Fantasy, haven't played them yet because they're mainly on Xbox, and they're probably just sitting there waiting for the eventual date that they will release. And for those people, I'm very excited for it because uh, they're great games. And Final Fantasy 7 Remake, when that got announced, then it didn't land on Xbox. There was a big deflation from gamers who wanted to check that out who were playing on Xbox. So really hope that this happens and it finally does end up landing on the platform. All right, let's talk here about one of the games I'm most excited for this year coming out very soon. And that is Space Marine 2. Got some more details about crossplay, and this is pretty cool. You're going to be able to pretty much crossplay everything on this game across PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam and everything. It says, from launch day, Space Marine 2 will support full cross between 
PS5, Xbox Series XS, Steam, and the, X, and the Epic Games Store, they say you will be able to play the campaign and PvE modes without any restriction. And then when it comes to the PvP mode, Eternal War, Saber Interactive says that things have to be split for fairness and balancing purposes. So crossplay will be split between PC players in one pool, Steam, and Epic Games Stores, and console players in the other one, which makes sense because it's all about the input control and stuff like it's very hard if you're on console playing with a controller and there's no restriction to if you're playing somebody with a mouse and keyboard you are just at a massive disadvantage so that does make sense but this comes out on september 6th and then we also have this the launch modes for it, the performance and everything console specs will have a quality mode 4k 30 fps on ps5 and xbox series x 1440p 30 fps on the series s and the performance mode at 1080p up to 60 frames per second on the ps5 the x but none for the series s so there's no performance mode on the series s which is kind of disappointing but i'm still happy they gave that performance mode option for the ps5 and the series x this is something that i've been saying just give the option people care way more about performance modes these days rather than just the fidelity of the games and how high the image quality is and if you just turn that down take off some of the effects and everything give that option of up to 60 frames per second 1080p people will be happy and i would be surprised if people chose to play in the 4k 30 fps even over the 1080p 60 fps and i guess it also depends on the screen they're playing on but if you're playing on a monitor or something and you want that smooth 60 fps people will, will i think opt for that 1080p so happy that they gave that option there's also dlss2 and fsr2 at launch and dlss3 and fsr3 are planned to for post-launch no ray tracing or hdr support supports dual sense and adaptive triggers and haptic feedback will not be there at launch and there's also cross play and cross saves as we just talked about so space range 2 looks like it's going to be a ton of fun i can't wait to jump in and play it and then finally we have this this is a i think a match made in heaven if you're going to get two companies to work together and release games and and shows and stuff and that is remedy partnering up with annapurna it says we are partnering with Annapurna to co-finance Control 2, and we hope you're as excited about what this means for our creative output and ongoing independence as we are. We're also happy to announce that Annapurna will work with us on expanding the Control and Alan Wake franchises into film and TV. So to me, this is a perfect match. I couldn't really think of two publishers, two developers and stuff to work better together, both highly narrative interesting styles of games and they're going to come together and fund the projects going forward but i will end the video there if you did enjoy this video hit that thumbs up if you are new you're hit that subscribe and i will catch you guys in the next video